What is up, everybody? Welcome to Apocalypse Movies. This is a little special video we have here. We are wrapping up the decade, if you will, the 2010s, which is crazy, makes me feel old, but it, we are going into a new decade, the 2020s. But um, in celebration of the wrapping up the decade, we are doing um, a couple decade film lists, and this one is going to be our top 10 comic book movies of 2010s of this decade we are going we did a point system jake will explain it a little bit more it's like most of our point systems it's a consensus list between all of us um so it's kind of you know there are movies that might be on our list that didn't make it um it we're going to oh, talk about there that are. this is going to be we're, we're going to talk there about are. that, um, that all by the no. way i am jacob bartley i am joined by Gio Ramos over here, Brian Avalocino on the Lazy Lounge over there, and uh, Mr. Jake Berlin over here on, uh, on you know, on the behind the controls. On the engineering desk. Yes, yeah. on the engineering desk. There we go. So, yes, this is going to be fun. Um, just a warning. We, Brian, Gio, and I, unless Brian knows, I don't know. I don't know. We do not know the order of the list. Jake is the only <laughs> one, the beholder of the list. Jake is the only one. So, Jake... Tell us a little bit more about how we put the list together and um, get into it. Yeah, so uh, we do this for a lot of our stuff. Um, at the end of each year, we do our consensus apocalypse list. Is, and we'll, it list is lists. Lists. Um, <laughs> list is. List. Uh, and we'll get those uh, probably in early January. We're doing this first because it's the end of the decade. Um, and the way it works is we essentially just put together a list of movies. Uh, we did top 20. Um, or no, excuse me. We did top 10 for this one. The way the points work is if it's a 10 spot, it gets one point. If it's the one spot, it gets 10 points. It kind of evens out from there. Um, so, you know, highest point wins. Obviously, if there's a tie, the way that ties work, uh, we go with however many lists it's on first. So say one movie has it's on four lists, the other one has five. The five list one's going to be above that one, even though they have the same points. If they have the same amount of lists, it goes on the highest spot on those lists. So say one of them is in the nine spot, and one of them is in the five spot, the five spot will win. So, um, that's the way it kind of works. Yeah, this this was a wild list to put together as far as additions. We've heard on every single. There are a couple. Jake. There are a couple uh, ties that are pretty. They they make a big difference. Gotcha. They make a big difference, and so wow. um, I'm very excited to reveal these. And I, I'm probably just gonna run through. Or maybe I'll run through because we have I because of our list. We even though we did ten, there were 21 total movies out of all the lists that we, that were on each. list. So I'll probably go through like 20 through 16 and then 15 through 11 and we'll get to the good stuff. So you'll just like you know, do those real quick. You know, I don't want yeah. you to say that. Cause then no, because then the, the rest of the 10, we don't know what order they're so in. So should we, should we do the honorable mentions later? Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do the honorable after, mentions after. afterwards. Okay, 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 fair enough, yeah, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I will... Yeah, that makes sense. So the way it's going to work is that we're going to run through each movie individually. We're going to talk about it and then we'll go so on and so on. This will probably take about an hour or so. Um... And we'll, we'll have plenty to talk about this. We'll talk about it all day. I can just sense myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be um, interesting. Yeah, it was the decade of heroes. And so this was a, a list to do uh, that made sense. So sitting at number 10, actually a tie between 10 and 10. And because it was on less lists, it made the number 10 spot. Captain America, Civil War. Nice. Sitting at number 10. Okay. Um, and I believe it was only on our list. Is why it only got its 11. Oh. Wow. So, War Guys? I mean, um, Joe and Anthony Russo's second film after second Civil movie, yeah. War. Oh, Winter uh, Soldier. Winter, Winter yeah. Soldier, yep. Um, Robert Downey Jr.'s arguably best performance in the whole MCU. Arguably. I agree, arguably, but Endgame, man. A lot of people like uh, yeah. uh, RDJ no, he, in Civil he's, War. He's great. He is great. Um, the Airport Battle. You could forget that the introduction of Black Panther and Spider Man and Spider Man. Yes, the movie uh, had a lot to do. That movie had a lot did to it do. Amazingly, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, especially for, like, arguably one of the biggest comic books. All -time. It's my all-time favorite comic storyline. It's my all-time favorite arc, and I think they did from what the MCU was given them. Her. Yeah, I love that movie. I, I I feel like I had it on my list. Did I not? Maybe. Let me look real quick. Yeah. Um. But I I absolutely love Captain America: Civil War. It is. It was not on your list. Oh, okay, first, I, I do, but there's so many <laughs> movies though. It's there are so, so many movies. Like I may, I'm not going to mention them, but I have some honorable mentions that I had to leave off, which was heartbreaking to leave off, to be honest. But Civil War, 
it, it is an all-timer. It is an all-timer for sure. Um, and especially just what it did introducing all those new characters and everything. And I, I RDJ man, uh, that's all. I always think about him finding out that the Winter Soldier, Winter Soldier killed his parents. That moment, yeah, <laughs> that where he's watching the footage. Crazy. Oh and God. people say the MCU isn't dark. And you see him murder their his parents. That oh my god! He straight up punches him to death and then chokes the mom. Like that's crazy. So yeah, Winter Soldier is or excuse me, Civil War is amazing. Yeah, that uh, and then the tension between Cap and Tony itself through the entire movie. Yeah, you know, just because Cap's on the run. And... The part that always gets me is when he's my friend. And... Uh, yeah, <laughs> that, that that moment's killer. But also passing the, shield back the conversation board, yeah. they have in, when they're in Germany in the office and they're talking about the pen and pepper pots and everything, mm-hmm. and then he's like, "I, I, I want to." Sometimes he's about to pretty, sign it. Your pretty little teeth, or yeah. whatever he says, "I want to punch you in your little perfect teeth, teeth. Yeah. Yeah. your perfect little mouth." Yeah. Yeah. Some, yeah. Um, and then he gives him the pen or whatever, and they talk, and it's like tension from there. Just you mentioned the introduction to Black Panther, man. Under Roos! Yeah. Like, it's so good. When Black Panther's uh, father dies in the Chaka. T'Chaka. Yeah. yeah. You definitely feel it. Um, mm-hmm. And it's uh, just incredible how that much screen time you can just, you know, feel the uh, the loss. Yeah. The loss and how it goes into his character and how he says vengeance, you know, has gotten the best of them. I won't let it get the best of me. I think it, for the amount of times we've seen Spider-Man's introduction, it was perfect. It was literally perfect. You have to redo the Uncle Ben story at Aunt May through Tony Stark, who's hot hitting Aunt on May. his mom. That hot, hot Aunt May hitting on uh, Tony Stark's <laughs> hitting on him. Her. And it was perfect. So why do you guys think it is relatively low on the list? I know, you, you tell you us. You left it off. It. So three um, people left it off, that's why. You will, the re- but like the why do you think that it's not like automatically in our you know crazy. top five or something like that? Because I I There's think for so me good the Baron Zemo thing or the the Zemo thing kind of I don't hate Zemo in that movie like a lot of people do, but I you know it kind of like you could have done that a little bit better yeah. I think and if, if that was that's the only real flaw to me in the movie. I actually will appreciate him more once. That's what I was going to say. Maybe. Well, yeah, for sure. But for me, the, the thing that gets me is, it, I, I said this back when the movie came out after a couple of viewings. There's a line in the first Guardians movie where Rocket Raccoon is talking to Drax and he says, Drax, I get you're upset, but guess what? Everybody has problems. Everybody has loss. And it, I thought about Zemo and it's like, yeah, I get you lost your your um, yeah. your family in the Sokovia course. That doesn't... For me, it wasn't enough for him to just go on this, you know. I evil, get what he was doing. Evil like, tear, you know. Um, it, it just, and that's just my own personal opinion. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it wasn't there. I'm saying for me, it, it wasn't enough. I get what he was doing, doing, but the way they executed it, it was like, wait a minute, what's going on? Wait, hold on a second. What? Oh, okay. Like it wasn't clear, like straight and up. His plan clear, so. required a lot to go right. Yeah. A lot to go right. Um, not saying it's way far fetched. I mean, it definitely happened the way he wanted it to, but, yeah, but it was. Other yeah. than that, but movies uh, again, yeah, know. yeah. I mean, you talk about Joe and Anthony Russo having to deal with an ensemble the storyline for Civil War. It still being very much a Captain America movie, despite how much it deals with Tony Stark and you know his his past, his parents, you know, and. The amount of characters that they're in, the amount of introductions, it's still at the center core, a Captain America movie about him remaining uh, true to his, his self, what he believes in, and saving Bucky. Even though I was Team Iron Man, you know, what, rewatching the movie, revisiting it four, three years later, it's it's still very much um, an achievement for Jordan and Now, now I'm, I'm like, what beat it at nine? <laughs> um, speaking of number nine, tied again with uh, eleven, but because it was on more lists, X Men: Days of Future Past. Nice. I'm glad it made the list. Number nine. I'm just glad it made what the list. And here's here is the reason why it won. If I'm not mistaken, I didn't put it on. That's for sure. It is because Geo had it at number three. That's the reason why it made the list. So I'll start this nice off. Geo. Um, I wasn't. And you remember this. I wasn't very high at, on Days of Future Past when, when it first came out because I was very much 
uh, uh, someone who, as we all did, grew up on the original trilogy, right? The, the original cast members. I wanted to see more of them. But one day I turned on Days of Future Past a couple years ago and I rewatched it and I was like, what am I thinking? This is an achievement right here. I mean, I, as, as great as Civil War was with cast, uh, with this ensemble, this movie deals with two ensembles. Brian Singer coming, coming back after um, uh, so many years off since uh, X2, X-Men United. And just what he's able to do with the whole time travel and making it work, making all these characters um, play the roles that they needed to play in a story as complex as Days of Future Past. I think it was incredible. I thought it was very emotional. Just I always think back to when Xavier shakes uh, Ian McKellen's or Patrick Stewart shakes Ian McKellen's hand for the last time, and it's kind of like their send off together. Like we had a great journey through four movies. I just I absolutely love this movie. The more I watch, and I just Jennifer Lawrence at the peak of her powers. Um, the best performance that she gives as Mystique, um, and Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. I mean, just c carries the movie a whole all the way through. It's just incredible. Yeah, it to me it is the best um, like non solo X Men movie. Like a team up X Men movie, it's the best one in my opinion. Yeah. I freaking love this movie. It handled time travel so damn well. And it was that perfect combination of the two eras of X-Men. And I you know it's Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, you know, my one of my favorite characters in film history. So to see him be the main character of this one was really, really cool. And I the Magneto thing, I just seeing Magneto wasn't a hero by the end of this movie, but he kind of redeemed himself in a way he fast Um so seeing good. Ian McKellen uh Magneto though, mm -hmm. uh right at the end and you know Walk all that stuff. It was mm -hmm. so cool, and just um, the, the action scenes in the future with the. So I was gonna with, say it was Storm. Oh and, my and, goodness! Uh, and uh, oh my god, what's who's the lady? Who, who's the lady? Who, who, uh, opens, who opens the portals? And oh and yeah, Blink? Blink. 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 Yeah, uh, incredible. That was cool. Uh, Bishop. Bishop. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ice Man. Ice came Man. Back. And seeing Colossus. them all get murdered in the first yeah. action scene was just crazy. Talk about Kitty Pride. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Kitty Pride played that Talk about pivotal role. Was she in that movie? Oh, she was in the director's the... cut. No, 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 that was Kitty Pride. Oh, yeah, that was Kitty Pride. Uh, they broke rogue out in the director's cut. The director's yeah. cut, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I, I freaking love this movie. It's, it is for me the best X Men. Film. I agree with you. It is the best X Men uh, team up movie in my opinion. Um, Mystique is incredible. This movie, she's so good. And that was Jennifer Lawrence, like yeah, a, a, um, yeah. I love Hugh Jackman as well. Out of all the X Men, this is probably his well. Um, as far as uh, goes. Um, How about the airplane scene when uh, when uh, McAvoy tries running fast running with them, fast running comes back and is like, "You were supposed to protect them, right?" Yep. He was, yep. Oh, uh, so good. Really? Oh, quick the quicksilver scene too. Oh, yeah, the, yes. awesome. yes. yeah. the very the, first one. Yeah, in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was incredible as well. Yeah, there's a lot to love in this movie. Lastly, sure. lastly, the ending when Hugh Jackman is going through the X-Mansion oh, and yeah. all of them make their final yep. appearance together. Cyclops, Cyclops. Talk about I, 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 I do wish, I wish that it would have ended there. I really do I wish. Still get because chills. Apocalypse makes it fun. The whole thing. Yeah, yeah. just kind of like, because it's all one, yeah. it's all one serious yeah. story. I think Because that would have been a perfect send-off to see all those characters. Ending. And then we got Apocalypse and Dark Phoenix, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, all right, well, number eight, moving on to number eight. This is where the controversy starts. Um, number are uh, sitting at 13 points. The original Avengers in the eight spot. Think that's okay? I, I, I'm surprised it's not higher. I really am. So the thing is, when I was putting my list together, because I this, for the longest time, this was my favorite comic book movie. But then the comic book genre just adapted and it grew, it transcended this movie in a way. I, this movie is, is the sole reason why comic book movies are what they are today. Yeah. It, it really is. It, there's no, you know, end game. There's no comic book genre the way it is today without this movie. And there's several movies we can say that about. But this one really just like, oh my goodness. And it just opened the floodgates for comic book film. It is, and I will not argue against anyone who says it's the greatest comic book movie ever. Um, but for me, it's like when I'm, comparing it to like Endgame or something, it's like 
it's like Avengers times a million is Endgame. So it's like it took everything that I love and just and then it has so much more. So that's why I had it lower in in some on my list. Where and I'm okay with it being on number eight, you know, because it it's these other movies just built upon that, and I don't want to say they're better, but they're you know it's there's more to see. Like if I can still see all those same characters in Endgame, and you know, sure. and watch it and get more like thirty other characters too. So that's kind of why I have it low, and I'm okay with it. It's but a, it, it's still amazing. It's it's a landmark movie for the genre. Yeah. Um, you think back to what was it, 2010 Comic Con when they brought the whole cast on stage with uh, Josh Whedon, mm-hmm. just a uh, iconic moment. The introduction of Mark Ruffalo's Hulk, um, incredible. Oh, true. That was his first appearance. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And just yeah. how they all kind of came together and were brought together. You know, like uh, Nick Fury says in the trailer. You know, um, so I forget the famous line that he says, like. You're part of a you're part of a larger world. Yeah. To to Robert Yang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, part yeah. of something larger than you realize. Yeah. That's what he said. Uh huh. And then the send off for Phil Coulson. Well, I thought it was <laughs> send off for Phil Coulson. It should have been send off for Phil Coulson. But um, I would argue this is uh, Tom Hiddleston's greatest performance as Loki in any. Uh, well, he's the baddest. Yeah. Loki yeah. has peak baddest. Yeah. 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 For sure. Um, I think what. And it takes it away from being a perfect movie. Um, obviously, Hawkeye, you know, got the short end of the stick as far as everyone um, getting their piece of the pie um, goes. But the New York scene, the when they're all together, when Hulk says, I'm always angry, punches the <laughs> whatever that alien ship is. And I then, still think like, my favorite moment in comic history is when the camera pans, pans around. Pans around them. Yeah. Like, that, that, yep. That when, gives me the chills. When that happened in Endgame, I was chills. like, oh, man, they brought me back to, <laughs> like, a, a time. Yeah, but what do you think? Yeah, hey, you, had, you had the highest on your list. Yeah. Really? Yours was the highest at five. I thought I was going to be on the low end. Of uh, I mean, it's staple. I mean, it's literally what set comic book me off first team up movie. I mean, it, it's for me it's hard to imagine where it's gone without this movie. Uh like one of those cl- it, it'll forever be the classic Avengers team up movie. It will want to watch something about the Avengers, that's the first movie you should go to. Yeah. Oh. So. How about Josh Wheaton? Like coming off of so, uh um Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and I, I think he did one movie. What was it? Uh, St- Stardust or what? Um, Layer he, Cake. What, what was the movie that he did? He there did the movie to his series. Um, Firefly. His, yeah, Firefly. Firefly. Yeah. yeah, and to to have this movie like his, Kevin Feige, genius, genius selection. Um, For this one. No. Well, yeah, that's that's another. And it was the yeah. start. Hey, I love it. Ultron, by the way, but it was the start of the Tony and Cap beef too. They were they were beefing back in this movie. So a lot of people say that it started like later on, but no, it was it started in Take this movie. Take the suit off and let you. Yeah, what exactly. Are you, Playboy billionaire. Uh huh. Philanthropist. Genius philanthropist. Yeah. So yeah. many genius. great MCU mom. Thor fighting Hulk in the carrier punch. Punch. Yes. Yeah. On top. On top of the monster. Yeah, yeah that was good. Oh my. Good. Yeah, just uh, there's a lot of love about it. Yeah, there's 100 percent a lot of love sure. about it. It's just it, like you guys have mentioned, it came out at a time where there was nothing like it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but since then, there's been a lot that's been like Hulk jumping back and forth between buildings yeah. and smashing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, moving on to number seven, sitting at sixteen points. Anne of Steel. Yes, it made the list. And the only reason why it made the list is because Mr. Ramos had it at number one. It was pretty high on my list, yeah, too. At number one for the decade. And I, Jacob, you had it at... I think I had it at five. You had it at four. Four or five, yeah. Mm-hmm. Take it away, boys. It was so tough. It was on one of our lists. It was on Keith's list? Um, it let's see. Been. Jake, I went back and forth between this and... and it was at number nine, nine on Keith's list. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. That yeah. must have helped. This yeah. and, and a mutual movie that we love, MCU. <laughs> I went back and forth. but. 
Man of Steel. First off, okay, you want to make Superman relevant for a modern audience, put him in a modern world. This movie but it did definitely did that and then some. Okay, let's just jump to the ending real quick. And Superman snapping Zod's neck. Superman kills. What a bold move. A bold move. And it not only was for nothing, it was because Superman had to make a choice. Had to make a choice between saving humanity or just you know, staying, oh no, I'm 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 no, well, I'm never well, that family right in front of them was gonna get sliced. They in were half. gonna die. But then Zod was never gonna stop. Yeah, Zod was yeah. exactly so and not only that, it, it also carried over to to him, like he was never the same after that. Um that as a character. And people forget this, but he was Superman for what, a week, if that? Not even a week, a couple of days. And then all these Kryptonians come out of nowhere and start attacking. But then I'm going to jump back to the opening scene in Krypton. Beautiful. The movie opens. Oh, the opening is The movie incredible. opens yeah. with the birth of Superman. And then Russell Crowe, for like 20 straight minutes, just takes over as Jor-El. Was he not good in that movie? I thought Russell Crowe. I would have Crow, loved him to see more. Yeah. And for him to come back as sort of like, kind of like a force ghost, I guess you could say. And kind of guide... <laughs> Superman, the fact that Superman, Kal-El, is being mentored by two fathers with completely different ideas. You got Jor-El and him saying, use your power for good. Um, you were born to be, you know, more. Like, Krypton lives in you. You have Kevin Costner as uh, Pa Kent. And that scene, it, man, when he... I am your son. Pa Kent? That's what he's called? Yeah. Pa yeah. Really? yeah. yeah. Pa when he's going to go save him and he just goes... Yeah. yeah. That scene is heartbreaking. Man. Yeah. Because he could easily say... In the trailer... For a dog. dog. Well, he didn't want to... Yeah, yeah, true. For, for a dog. dog. And he didn't want to... Hey, you would have ran in... You're right. You're right. So, but it was... It right, was right. so he didn't have to reveal himself to the world. Absolutely. It's if crazy. the world found out... He would. And right. in the trailer, one of the most iconic... One of the most iconic lines in the trailer... Is when he when he says, "What was I supposed to do? Let them die?" And he goes, "Maybe." That hit me so much. Oh, that because yes, that it's not the, the ideal yeah. Superman that we all that we've all known, right? But he's gonna get there. It's not the time right now. It's not the right time. The world isn't ready for that. Lawrence Fishburne says it to Amy Adams at one point in the movie. If the world found out what you know, uh, uh, the Superman really was, imagine how people would react. That was so true yeah. and so relevant to this world. And then Hans Zimmer's score, it was beautiful. Say, say what you will, you cannot deny Hans Zimmer is like the second coming of John Williams. He is amazing. He's done so much work. And Man of Steel was definitely some of his best the, work. Uh, the, the track Flight is on my score playlist. On oh my God, it's, it's, it's so beautiful. And Christopher Nolan, like this, uh, uh, I know his name was producer on most, he was definitely involved in this movie. Um, and handpick yeah. Zack Snyder, yeah. who is so underrated oh, as a film between these two right now. Yeah, yeah it's about to be heated later. I cannot wait. Say something My about Man of Steel. Uh, uh, I, 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 all right, Man so of Steel. The, incredible. the reason why Man of Steel is so important to me is because prior to this movie, I was not a Superman fan. I, so, not that I hated Superman, I didn't dislike Superman, but if you were to, at that, before this movie, if you would have said, Top ten favorite superheroes. I, he he's not making that list. I will agree and with you. I didn't put it on my list, but I despised. Superman. I thought he was. And so, this movie in the, and gave me a little. Honestly, a lot of it has to do with Henry Cavill's performance, but also, like I said, I didn't. I wasn't even. Excited. I didn't go watch it in theaters. I I watched it on after it came out, and I fell in love with it. I watched it multiple times. I just and. You know, I love the slow pace and how we're just analyzing the character and then you get the action stuff later on. And I, because, yeah, and I, the thing is, a lot of people say, oh, Superman, he's just, what, he's not interesting because he's, you know, indestructible and undefeatable. The, in the galaxy and the world that they live in, he's not the most powerful being in the galaxy. He, the Earth needs him to face, there's bigger threats out there that Earth has no chance and against. And Superman is, is just like a, a soldier for earth and he's he's That's very powerful true. but you know he can't even defeat some of the things out there on his own so i just for me it 
now, if you ask me, you know, Superman's definitely in my top 10 favorite superheroes, maybe even approaching top five, and, and it's because of this movie, so that's why it's important to me. Only he could have stopped that. <laughs> what? Um, all right, let's move on before you guys take too long on this movie. What was, was that? A great movie. Watch um, Man of Steel. That was, that was number seven, and number six, the lone animated film on the list, no. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Nice. Now I'm annoyed. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And this solely comes down to Keith and Brian. They both had it on their list. Yeah, I wasn't on uh, mine, but I thought about it. I thought Keith about it. Had it at, Keith had it at number two. I had oh, it at number wow. two also. Keith, Damn. You did, you did. You both of you had it at number two. You are Damn. Damn. So, take four. I mean, why, why do you think I, it's on this list? It is so, this movie, I, I remember when it was trailered and stuff, and I was just like, stupid. Me too. Why are they doing this? This is dumb. This movie has blown me out of the water probably more than any movie I could ever think of from going from absolutely despising to absolutely loving this There, I've probably watched this movie like, you know how like, you throw on a movie before you go to bed or something like that? I'd probably do it the most with this movie. I love it. It's just so good from being and Art, the, like, the story is great. I remember uh, when I was a substitute, I brought it to school and played it for like the seniors. And seeing like where I work, where it's just a diverse group, it's all just loving this movie and seeing the impact it had on them. Not just your basic white Superman. Like the it's the movie is so good on so many different levels, and it's like. This movie never, never gets, gets old to me, ever. There's never, a, it just doesn't. Like, every single time I find myself enjoying it, enjoying the same parts, it just doesn't get boring to me. And I just, I had a hard time, like, put it my two and three choice, I won't say them, where I was like, shut this. But I go back and forth to, if I'm gonna throw, my list was kind of like, if I'm gonna throw on a movie, what am I going to throw on? And it was oh, almost every time it was this one. And I just, it, it's great. It's, it's, I was covering the same boat. I thought like, wow, this is kind of, the, why are they doing this? I didn't I even want, want to see, see this movie, movie there were, that bad to me. There were, there's so many aspects of the movie. Incredible. First of all, I mean, Miles Morales, the first black Spider-Man. That's obviously a big, um, where he comes from in his school. But the way they actually do, movie too as far as um aesthetically goes with the animation is incredible oh, yeah yeah um true. and a lot, a lot of people bash on the movie don't understand the type of filmmaking they're doing about the blurriness they did it for a reason like it's on purpose because it makes it look like a comic book it's exactly what you want from this type of movie so um all those people who who you know say this is the best spider-man movie this is the best spider-man movie it's not for me but i do not argue with them any yeah, second me neither. because that's i mean it's the first Movie, animated movie to dethrone Disney and Pixar in like what? Almost, I think it was nine years. Rightfully so. It didn't make my list, but this movie is truly special. It's it's just a great, great, great film, and I just always think of um, you know, the ending, the, the if they call it the leap of faith that yeah, Miles faith. Morales does so good, and I soundtrack. You know, for a long time, I mean, even still animated superhero films are like for direct to dvd and yeah. um for netflix and things like that but not anymore uh, i think this this that's why this movie is important it changed that landscape of animated superhero films like we've gotten things like big hero six but that's different you know it's like it's a still comic book adaptation but it's not a superhero that we're familiar with and and i i just think now going forward we're getting spider-verse 2 obviously but other studios are going to start thinking about doing animated films. Um, well, we're, seeing the, we're seeing the MCU do the What If series. Exactly. So I, I think it kind of changed the game a little bit. So and, it's a you know, I, I, I give it credit, credit because it, it was, was not done, done by Marvel. Marvel. It, was it was done, done by, by Sony. Sony. Straight up Sony, yeah. And, I mean... I'm, Sony had a big year last year with the Spider-Man it, property. It's, yeah. 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 It, Venom as well. I mean, Venom is what it is, but... They, it made over $800 million, it, is what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what, yeah. I mean, yeah. it... It kind of almost yo don't even start, but it it kind of reminds me of how like how like DC like they make incredible TV shows 
and then movies are hit and miss. I it almost kind of made me think like Sony kind of you know maybe Sony's really good at the animated stuff and hit and miss with the movies. Well, that's why they're making a universe. Out of I'm just exactly. glad that's Spider Man movie made the list because yeah, I love Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. Phil, <laughs> Phil Lord. Uh, Phil Star- all right, well, moving on to our top five. We got number five spots. So happy this one is up here. Thor Ragnarok with 24 Yes, points. I was worried it wasn't going to yes. make it. Thor Ragnarok yes. with 24 I, I think we all had it. I don't yeah. know, man. I just go ahead and we look through. I wasn't sure see. because I was thinking, like, um, damn, we're up more than the bottom five already, and it hasn't been mentioned. I was a little bit worried. Oh, I, I never crossed my mind. So, yeah, uh, Keith is the only one who didn't have it on his list. Interesting. Really? Um, wow. Jacob, you had it the highest, and I think Brian and I may have been tied, or you may have been one behind me. I have it at number three, so, right? Yeah, and Brian had it at four, and I may have had it at five. I may have, I'm not sure if I had it at five or not. I I put, yeah, so I just like Brian was saying, when he was talking about Spider-Verse, like, what move do you want to, you want to throw on? I throw on Thor Ragnarok Same. all the time. Like, yep. I I seriously have watched it like 25 times since it came out. And no, and not all the way through, right? But just, I have started it at least or jumped to Honestly, certain parts. there's a lot of times where, because I like to fall asleep with the TV, I put that on to fall asleep. Just to listen to it. And I, and I always, I fast forward when it gets to Sakaar. I always fast forward when it gets well, to Well, that's, Sakaar. that's good. But I love the opening of the movie. Oh, 100%. the opening of the movie when he starts the music. swinging his yeah. hammer and the, and he goes, <laughs> and when he spins it around and he's just hitting them really oh, fast. Dude. And then when he flying with the dude. dragon behind him, dude. like that's a Thor movie right there. This is for me, it's the best solo MCU film. It's, it's, I struggled putting this above my number two, which would have been crazy for me. Um, so I almost had this movie at number two. Wait, let's see what's um, I think uh, uh, it's definitely not passing my number one, but I this is like who knows? By the time it's all said and done, this might be my second favorite comic movie. This is my second time. all-time favorite Sam movie. This was oh, this was the Thor movie we always yes. should have had. <laughs> And it changed Thor too, the it, character. Thor was the least liked Avenger, probably. Main Avenger. Uh Captain America was sorry. No, Get the hell shot out. Out. He, he was, was boring. Come You're on. insane. No, dude. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna deny that because before Winter Soldier, Winter Soldier. Uh, yeah. the general audience did wasn't like in love yeah, with Captain America movie. before the Winter Soldier. It's true. Thor I've talked two. to so no, many Thor people. Thor had one before the Avengers. Bro, I've talked to yeah. so many. Ca- I'm not saying that. Iron Man, Cap- Ragnarok. I'm saying. Oh, oh. I'm, saying, oh, oh. I'm, saying, oh, oh. I'm saying not so saying I agree with that, but a lot of casual fans did not like Captain America I'm saying, before took, that movie. But before Winter Soldier. Listen, what I'm saying is, is it took it took Captain America two movies to become really liked. It took Thor three movies to become someone that he, he was. No one ever said, "Oh, Thor's my favorite." After mm-hmm. those two movies, and yeah, so, but that's right more on the filmmaker though. Ex- so, but that's well, what yeah, I'm saying. Exactly. They could have Michael or Alan Taylor. That's not even. Like, but that's what I'm saying. Like, if if Ragnarok, it's not Chris Hemsworth's fault or anything. If like Ragnarok no. would have been made, I guarantee you, he would have died probably in one of these throw off movies out of because of popularity alone. His popularity exploded. And then, I mean, talk about Chris Hemsworth exploded. His popularity exploded after Ragnarok. You can't tell me people were going around going, Thor's so cool. He's like one of my favorites before no, Ragnarok. That's true. It's true. I, yeah. I would argue that he, because of Ragnarok, is the reason he is now going into a fourth. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, no. 100%. Yeah. Sure. If, if, yeah. He, if Ragnarok would have been made yeah, in the style of the two before. I mean, they obviously planned it out, but like it, he became like one of the main characters in Infinity War as well. Like, if not the, the main character. Yeah. Other than Thanos. House, and it wasn't even. And you could definitely see it in Hemsworth's uh, performance. You know, yeah. the, this new energy, new it. enthusiasm for, you know, Thor. There's um, a reason he's getting a four. Yeah. 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 I mean, in the. He shows. I mean, I get it. it put him on the map, and now everyone wants him to do everything. He, he's become a no name now. Yeah. Um, if he hadn't been in the past, he definitely is now. Um, how about Jeff Goldblum? Oh, <laughs> he's so. Oh my goodness! Ask uh, like Give him. me more. Give me more. Jeff I Goldblum. love that when he gets when Thor first gets to Biscar and that when he first meets him, that scene is hilarious. Uh, what is it? He calls it Sparkle Fingers. Oh yeah. Fingers, yes. <laughs> oh, I want to watch it right now. <laughs> uh, all right, going into our number four, 
We have 31 points. We got a tie again for the fourth and three, uh, four and three spots. Is this the one? Are we in the controversial? We're, we might be in the controversial stage right now. Uh, number four, with 31 points. Avengers: Infinity War, sitting at number four. Okay. <laughs> I, Jacob, you had the highest on your list, so take the floor. So I had it at number two. Um, I have number two. We, I was just hanging out with Jill the other day, and we were like. What, what should we put on? And we put on Infinity War, and we were just like, just remembering how great it is. Um, for me, um, I have it's my number one Avengers film. Uh, for me, I I have it dear to my heart. I it's so for me, it just flows so smoothly, and it's so it never slows down, but in a good way. Like it's just it piece the pieces fit together all so well, and building off of Ragnarok, Thor character is amazing. It. If if the panning around in the first Avengers movie isn't my favorite moment in comic history, it's Thor showing up in Wakanda because yes. that scene is absolutely incredible. And Robert Downey Jr. has a huge role in this movie. Sp the reason why I like this one so much because you have Spider-Man's in it, Doctor Strange is in it, and it's oh, like they're all working together. And mm -hmm. and uh, when uh, Iron Man goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Thanos, Thanos, it's so badass yeah. and and then when uh dr strange fights thanos so amazing and then the snap is so epic like everybody lost their minds when the snap happened so it's just a super iconic film and there's several of those in the mcu but this Funny. one is See, my favorite avengers film one of the scenes that always gets me i literally every single time i watch it i get chills when cap shows up in the subway yep Oh, and then it just oh the, the music, the music is talk about the Avengers music. That music is incredible. I, I, I get I'm talking about it. Yeah, chills. I love that moment. That scene, that whole fight scene is it blows my mind. That might be top three favorite parts of the whole entire movie. Just that them showing up. I love it because music. Falcon and Black Widow are are just regular humans and they're fighting and these super Widow powered. Whoops. Black Widow yes. whoops uh, Corvus Glaive's yeah, ass. Yeah, she does. And we don't want to kill you, but we will. Yeah. I love yeah. that. No, line. the movie is incredible, and the movie only gets better because you add it on top of Endgame. Yeah, you know, like, exactly. And then you go back and watch it and add more to it. I think like it hurts a little bit because of Vision and Scarlet Witch and then what they did with Hulk. I, but other than that, it's... Yeah, I, I, I love this movie. I think it's incredible. Um, I love the Cap stuff, even though he's not in there a lot. And the Wakanda battle is just absolutely... Um, everything with Thanos, uh, Spider-Man death scene, heartbreaking. Um, there's so many things to love about this movie. Um, it sets up Endgame. I mean, Endgame was the event of the year. Yeah. Um, and that movie wouldn't be what it is if Infinity War wasn't successful. Like, if that movie wasn't successful, we wouldn't have gotten Endgame, so it's just that much more. Yeah, it's definitely a Thanos movie. You know, that's, oh, that's, that's he's the main character. That's something that they gave the villain the spotlight. Exactly, that's what Feige yeah. said. That's what the Russo says. But I didn't believe it until I saw it. You really you is know, the main character. Just, because I mean, to be honest, the MCU villains were kind of the weaker part of the MCU movies, and then you have uh, Hela in uh, Thor Ragnarok. You have the Winter Soldier to an extent in uh, the Winter Soldier, and then Thanos is just like. Josh Brolin. Killmonger. Killmonger, yes. Yeah. It came before. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was right. thinking of Jeff Bridges in Iron Man yeah. 1. I was like, what? Ironmonger. Iron oh, Iron what did I say? Killmonger. Oh, oh, Iron. No, no, no. Killmonger, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Killmonger. But, I no, mean, not Ironmonger. No. Yeah, I, I, I have to, you have to talk about Josh Brolin as, as Thanos. Like, what a great, great pick. And even better, like, his, his ability to do the, the motion Force. capture... His voice, the Thanos theme, the little music that plays when he's talking is amazing. Yeah, just, I mean, again, a lot of these movies on the on the list, ensemble cast, the ability to you know balance it, you know, give everyone their, even a character like Ebony Maw, like someone who when he died, you're just like ah. Oh. Not I me. I, oh. And then he comes he's back so in that game, and it's just like, yes, there you are. I love when he's back. For, I would have been more upset if he wouldn't have been in that like New York scene oh. where he's just literally he's not even moving. He's just like the bricks when he sharpens the bricks and throws them, yeah. and they they open up the portal and send them back at him. So cool. Yeah. This is uh, four. 
This is for yeah. him. Uh, there are some uh, movies that I'm like, why aren't they on? Uh, number three. Oh, this is Let's get so this it. this one tied with Infinity War. Okay. Uh, but because it was um, the highest on someone's list, it sits up at the number three spot. That goes to none other. I knew. Ogan at number three, and the reason why is because Jacob had it at number one. Yeah, I'm mean, thinking for sir. You guys know why it was higher, probably? Because I haven't even. Played. Yep. Oh damn. We'll talk about that later, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you guys know how much I, you guys know how much I love Logan. Um, it is for sure my favorite comic book movie of all time. Um, not even just of this decade, of all time. And it's just, you know, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but like I, I grew up loving the X Men, and then the movies came, and it's just Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, like just changed the Wolverine character forever. And he is, him and Robert Downey Jr., um, as of now, you know, some people playing characters' careers aren't done, but him and Robert Downey Jr. are just the two greatest um, portrayals of comic book characters of all time. And most accurate, too. In a way, yeah. I mean, he's not short like Wolverine, but other than who cares about the height of a character? It doesn't even matter. But I just, this movie is, it's hard because it's like, it doesn't really feel like a comic book movie. It feels, it feels more like a western, western exactly it feels like a western movie and you know you could do a lot in the comic book genre so it definitely is a comic book movie obviously but for me just him and x 20 relationship and seeing them fight together is, is just awesome and i you know i haven't seen many send-offs for characters that are better so it's just an important movie to me all-timer best yeah uh it's just yeah i mean R rated factor. Yeah. Just, oh, when he goes the berserker. Op- the open, the... Well, no, the opening scene with the limo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. After him, that right action there. with the rated oh, R. So good. Yeah. And, then, and then and you mentioned the berserker scene where he gets the serum and he's just full Wolverine. Sprinting in the woods. Like, that scene is absolutely remarkable. And so, yeah, I mean, it, there's a reason it's high on uh, on everybody's list except for Brian's. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, well, now, I don't think we'll ever get a movie like it again either way which is a true testament to what it means what it is i think brian just hates good movies yeah i think so <laughs> no i mean this Fair. is i uh if i'm correct me if i'm using this term wrong but this is like hugh jackman's swan song you know yeah. because he wanted to do a great wolverine movie he almost had it with the wolverine movie that took place uh in japan which i am very much a fan of um but in, in this movie it was you know what? Give me a low budget R rating. We're gonna do this right. Is that a low budget? Yeah, relative, relatively. Yeah. What was it? What was it like? Fifth, forty million? million? It was like ninety million. Ninety million, I think. Oh wow. Yeah. Um, but ninety-seven million. That was okay. okay. Not, All right, not, not so much low, budget. but that's nothing for compared to lower, yeah, lower ish. And I budget. think it made like over eight hundred million. I'm pretty sure. But I think what what really carries. A lot of this movie is or six hundred Patrick Stewart and Hugh Jackman them working together. You get a different Professor Xavier than unlike anything you've seen before. Um, and this movie definitely speaks about getting older, aging, you know, and not not being able to do the things that you know you used to do or having full of your powers like you used to have, you know. Um, and uh, that him having the, a strokes. Oh my so god! Yeah, in the movie theater, and you, you're just you feel it. You 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 feel the and the, the slow the motion pain. like yeah. claws through the head oh, and everything. <laughs> but the the one scene that always gets to me is when he uh, uh, Logan is bearing Pro- uh, Professor X, a father figure, and then he's standing over him and then he's trying to hold bacteria and he's saying, you know, this place isn't bad. There's trees, there's water, and then he chokes up. And then he just goes back to the truck and he just destroys this truck. And he's just, he's a man who's just lost. He's, he, he's lost everything. He's lost his X-Men. He's lost his father figure. There's nothing left. And he's just like, why can't I go? You know, he's stuck. It's just Except it, his it's, daughter. It's or his so, clone which, daughter. Yeah, his which, daughter. which yeah, he later finds out. You know, there's some, everything happens for a reason. And it's just, this movie is so deep and it's just, 
Daphne Keene is, yeah. in, for an introduction, she's so good. She's so good. So yeah. good. I love when they, she reveals that, or when she first talks. She's speaking Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> her, her best. Like her toe claws. Oh, yeah. Oh. Where she... Oh, yeah. That... She's so badass when she just walks out of the factory, rolls the head between their <laughs> feet, and it's just like, you want to go? Let's go. And she's fearless. Fearless. All right. Well, let's move on to the top two oh, of God. our list for the decade. There's only two that I could... Um, Number two, with 32 points, one point above Logan in Infinity War, Avengers Endgame. I knew. It's in a number two. I knew number one was going to be what it was. Uh, Yeah, so Avengers Endgame, like, I mean, the movie we've been waiting 10 years for. um, It might be my favorite movie. The Return of the King of (laughs) comic book movies. That's crazy. Uh, But look, um, no, I'm just saying, like, it's a crazy statement. Like, I wasn't calling you crazy. Um... Yeah, it just, the fact that you take 10 years of a universe and tie it all into one movie with probably around 30 major characters, and then you do the time travel factor, two different Thanoses, you go to space and, space and you go to Earth, all these different pieces that come into play, and you bring all these characters back from the dead, you do it successfully, and then you pull our hearts out by killing Black Widow and Tony Stark. And kind of Captain America. Well, sending him off in, yeah. in good old fashion, but in all the things it had to do, we've been talking about Star Wars so much and all everything that it had to do. This movie had a lot to do as well, and it captured it successfully, just crushed it out of the park. And I, I'm happy it's a number two. I, I think this it's was a my perfect, number. One. I think it's a perfect spot for it. It was your number. One. This this movie, only movie that I openly cried, like wept. I thought maybe I'd get that in Star Wars, then I didn't. I full on cried. It was like a piece of my family died. It it was I mean, we've put ten years of investment into it and learned to love these characters, literally. This movie ever even even same with Black Widow, like when she died. Like Ugh movie literally it almost feels like it's a part of me that for me at least like culmination of 10 years yeah a third of my life so far and it's it's crazy and that's i honestly truly think this might be my i thought how both characters were killed off was nothing short of beautiful um for natasha to you know sacrifice her life in the presence of hawkeye you know who I'm sure we'll learn about in the Black Widow solo movie more is kind of really saved saved her, you know, um, as she mentioned in Avengers 1. But for Tony Stark to kind of finally, you know, confront, I guess, his fears, which go back to the first Avengers movie where he first saw Thanos' ship, or maybe not Thanos' ship, but he like, fell you know. The sky. Yeah, pretty much. And then just how he's just laying there and, so exhausted, burnt out, literally, um, and cannot talk. Like, it's just, and then how Pepper is like, you can rest now. It's just, you did your service. Ten years of MCU, you can rest now. This this character is forever established, not only in the MCU, but in comic book movies, the genre. You will not ever not think of comic book movies, not think of Stark, of, of Robert Downey Jr. Even if yeah, did, it was yeah. it was hard for me. Um, I went back and forth between this and Infinity War, as far as like what's my favorite Avengers film, um, and I, they're they're neck and neck. They're, you know, I, I just think Infinity War works a little bit better for me. But this movie is incredible. I you know Iron Man is my favorite character in the MCU, Robert Downey Jr. Um, so I I. The, the death scene is beautiful. Like it handled so well. It's handled realistically too. It wasn't like he was bleeding out for five minutes and he had like a big speech while he died, like saying bye to everyone. No, he died. His body was like rotting from the thing, and he died instantly almost. And he had, a, I think he said one word, like he said pepper or something. And um, when she says, "Look at me," he looks at her, and it was just a and Tom Holland's reaction to that. Brody. 
yeah. amazing. And I love that those are the, you know, it was Rody, Pepper, and and uh, Peter there died off I, uh, conveniently. I mean, Pepper flew over, I guess. Um, but they, it was, it was perfect for them to be there. And I, it was just an epic moment. And then also, I, the, one of my favorite parts of this movie is a subtle moment. It's when Happy's sitting down with his daughter yep, and burgers. he says, are you hungry? She's like, okay, or yeah. She's and then she, when she's okay. <laughs> like your dad loves cheeseburgers. You think about she says, okay. One. Yeah, it's okay, cheeseburgers, she has cheeseburgers as, as you want. want. And cheeseburgers sounds yeah, really good. Right? Yeah. It does. But we're going to talk about. I, that scene makes me want to cry more than anything else in the movie. Because it's just like, she doesn't get to grow up with her dad. And it's just so sad. Um, And, and yeah, it, this movie is amazing. It's, I don't, I won't argue against anyone who says it's the greatest comic movie time either. So that, yeah. <laughs> Can we talk about fun moments? I mean, I feel like this is a sad review of Endgame. Oh, like, I will never. How about the, I don't the think, characters? All oh, I was going to say, I don't think the final battle, battle will ever be taught to me. For me, by anything, like on I mean, your left, it's dude. Pretty, oh my it's, goodness, it's up there with with Return of the King. I, I, I keep saying that. Sorry, <laughs> Return of the King is amazing. <laughs> um, I don't think anything will ever stop or like pass, surpass my excitement for that final battle. The second the portals open, actually, no, screw that. Before that, I mean, when they're fighting oh, Thanos, yeah. like oh, the second yeah. the big three, big three yeah. I'll say Where Cap picks up. The hammer. Uh, I, I think amazing. from the second they walk out, and he says, "Let's do this. What's killing properly Thor, this time?" His, his the I love that. I said, braids. "You think it's a trap?" And he, Iron Man says, "Yep." I, but I don't much care. And he's like, "As long as we're all in agreement." And then both hammers, <laughs> amazing. I think from that point on to second he dies, I don't think anything for me right oh, yeah. now that I can think of will ever be able to well, top that. If we're talking scene. about like. A, a chunk of a movie that is I, I said that's the greatest thing I've ever seen in, in any movie yeah, it's ever. incredible yeah. and I mean even like you have your haters of the people that like were like oh the female characters lined up I love that scene I love that I love that, that scene like, it was badass like and it wasn't forced no no not and, at all Evangeline Lilly when she twists her uh, yeah. God, like the whole entire thing I just sit there in awe Every single time I watch it, like, holy crap! Like, this is what we get. Like, um, it's it's. Oh, yeah. it, we didn't deserve it. It was, it was too good. It was too it really good. Was. It was too good. So I mean, and done by the Russos. Which okay, go ahead and let's move on Ooh. because I already know. Speaking of, Russo's. I think Jake rigged the numbers. Number one, he really do. <laughs> yeah. oh, There's no he definitely way. did. Number one comic book movie of the decade. It won by six points. Captain America. It won by yes. six points. It won by six yes. points. That's a landslide. Um, so I had it at I'm number one. I'm Keith had it high on his list. I too, had it right? at number one. I had Geo it. had it at, I had it at number, number two. two. I had it at three. You had it at three, and Keith had it at number one. And you didn't have it on your list. I did not, no. Get out. <laughs> Get out. Look, not um, Logan on this list. movie. Get uh, out of your own house. Here. Get out. <laughs> this, Get out. This movie is, uh, this is, this is everything that not just a Captain America movie should be, but a superhero movie should be. Um, realistically, it's really not even a superhero movie. It's a spy movie. Yeah. Um, which is why I'm so, which is, which is why I'm so marveled by it. Uh, mm-hmm. Every time I watch oh, it, oh, uh, it's, it's the movie you guys were talking about, like, oh, it's the movie I put on. Like, this is the movie that I put on. Yes. Personally, like I, I could watch this scene, any scene in the movie, and be happy with it. Um, the elevator scene is the highlight, of course. Yeah. The end fight scene as well. The the opening scene where, where he's fighting on the oh boat. the Lumerian star, the he's Lumerian sprinting. star scene, sprinting, um, absolutely incredible because they they oh solidified God. Cap as a true like superhuman yes. Yes. soldier. Yes. Um, and you know we talked about scores in a couple other movies. I absolutely love this score. Henry Jackman. Um, he, the Lumerian star scene in the opening is incredible, but so is the Winter Soldier score. Um, far none, one of my favorite scores that Marvel has ever done. So yeah, this this movie is, and it's the Russo's first. Yeah, movie. It, it, everything. I mean, the way they use Black Widow too, maybe her best performance ever in an MCU movie. Yes. Yeah. Um, her, her and Cap's relationship yeah. is incredible. The way that they work together. Um, yeah. On and off the, on the job, and yeah. you know, we meet Falcon in this movie. He's introduced so well mm-hmm. in the movie. 
Um, the Peggy Carter stuff is heartbreaking, of course. Yeah. You know, seeing oh my God. State. There's so much to love about it. I can go on all day. The about action, it, the hand fighting it's choreography. So, my what probably my all time favorite hand to hand combat scene is at the Winter Soldier when they first meet, and then the reveal of Bucky sees him. Mm-hmm. Um, that sense. scene where they're fighting and. Winter Soldier flips the knife in the oh air. God. I I can watch that scene all day long, and then when Cap puts the shield up and they punch, and he punches it, like it's straight out of the comic book, and it's just the it's threat incredible. is real. So They're good. raining bullets so when Nick Fury gets ambushed so in good. his vehicle. It, you feel like you're in danger just watching it. It, it the stakes are, are Robert so Redford high. incredible. Robert Redford incredible. Yeah. Just a, a so much amazing. Love. I mean, uh, and then you have um, Frank Grillo as as crossbones. Cross three, bones. three cross three cross three cross bones. Yeah, yeah, such good stuff in this. Movie. I'm going all day. Uh, what, what's what's the guy's name? The one in the computer. Uh, Arnim Zola. Zola. Oh, Arnim Zola. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love the that way spin. Does, so I good. Love the way. You... So Jacob, why didn't you have it on your top ten? Um, Do you love it? Why are you not going to be in a puck book? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Brian. Founding member. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Get out, Ryan. <laughs> um, I I do I love this movie. No, no doubt about it. Um, there's so many movies that aren't on my list that I love. Um, like uh, we'll talk about them, but like I I I had to leave Homecoming off, which was heartbreaking. I had to leave Wonder Woman off, which was hard. But Winter Soldier also it's it is as far because here civil war is a captain america film and it is a captain america movie but it doesn't feel like a solo film so it's it's it is soldier or civil war civil war okay it's a team-up movie that's it's captain america team up movie i don't know how to explain it but but it's as avengers 2.5 in a way it is but they did a great job of making that also be a captain america movie this is truly a solo captain america film and i i love that and to me you know, you guys all love it way more than I do, obviously. But I, for me, the one scene I always think about when I think about this movie, and it, I love it, is when when him and Sam are talking like in the hallway of um, Sam's yeah, veteran, the and he's like, stuff, yeah. and then he, Sam asks him like, like, so what are you gonna do like, if you're not? I don't know. And it's like that the look on Steve Rogers' face in that scene is incredible. It to me, this is I love I love this movie because it's an intimate movie, meaning it's only about three or four characters. And it, you get to really get to know them, all of these characters, you know, mm. uh, Sam, Black Widow. Well, that, that conversation with America. Steve and Natasha on when they're in Sam's room, they go to his house and they're having an yeah. intimate conversation about everything. It, yeah. It's incredible. And, you know, I, I understand why people love it so much. It, not just you guys, but just Universally, it's loved, very, very high thought of, and so I'm not going to argue against it. It's it's an incredible film. On your left, the openings. On your left, the, the, the just, notebook of everything yeah. he needs to do. Yeah, you know the the Star Wars trilogy and yeah. you know, Marvin Gaye's album, and then the scene with Natasha where they're talking about their kiss, and oh, he was yeah. like, "It's really that bad." It's like I haven't done it in so long. <laughs> Leave me alone, or whatever. Which is, so, oh, you haven't said much about it, and you love this movie. I because I've been on the. Attack. Ah, uh, got it. Yeah, you uh, had a number two. I like uh, no, I had a three. Oh, okay, three. Um, which you it, right when Natasha drives up and goes, "I'm looking for the Smithsonian. I'm here to pick up a fossil." Yeah, <laughs> like, like it's that movie is. There's nothing wrong with that movie, in my opinion. It's just it's it blow it. It may solidified why Captain America was always my favorite because I actually personally do love the first Avenger. I mean, oh, I like, too. But I, like, I think it's so underrated. It gets bashed on as being like kind of boring and stuff, but Not I love that movie, and it made it went even better, and then it went better so with Civil War. It's so. really true, like for general perception, this movie made Captain America cool. Oh, 100%. it did. Like he's, I mean, it solidified Chris Evans was. Perfect choice for this role. Uh, I mean, because you kind of it. It's one thing to do Captain America in the past, but then to put him in the present. The character changed so much. Yeah, um, from the first Avenger to Endgame. And can like, we talk about his suit? Yeah. Oh, the stealth, the stealth suit you're talking about, right? Yeah, I'm a fan suit. of that suit more the than suit. the. Uh... Yeah, that it's probably his best original. suit. No, his his best suit is the end games. 
scales. Yeah, the scales. The scales is, is by far one. the best. Yeah, that but the stealth suit's up there. Stealth suit is worse. Is because the, what they did, what they did is they took, they took his suit. They get a World War II suit, which bulky, padded. It's huge because he's going to war, right? And he goes on the modern day. They give him a stealth suit that's you know, tighter on the body. It's quicker. It's faster. And then they went back to the World War II suit um, with Age of Ultron, I believe, which is a little bit thicker. But then the Russos were like, F that. This guy is a mean mother effer. We're giving him a quick, badass, stealthy suit. But then they put it in the real Captain America colors yeah. with the scales and everything. It's just like, it's incredible. Yeah, so that, good. I mean, that movie, just it's not, it doesn't feel like a superhero movie either. It literally is like a spy threat. And it's, mm-hmm. Crazy because there's no other movie that really has done that. Sure. So, well, a lot of movies take the sub drama, but nobody's in a spy thriller. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, like, you get these certain movies that in the MCU that are like its own category, like spy thriller for Winter Soldiers. Apparently, uh, heist movie for Ant-Man. The Multiverse of Madness one is going to be like a horror-ish. Ant-Man movie. was a heist comedy. It, mm-hmm. Yeah, like that. So you get these certain genres and stuff, but it it's relatively untouched ever since then. And, I mean, As it should be. Yeah, and look, the Russos were no ones until this... I wouldn't say no one. Well, they were comedy directors. Yeah, they weren't... They were comedy They weren't comedy household directors. names until this movie... And look how many movies they got to produce or do after that, and they're the biggest ones. Not only the, yeah, they're the set for life now. <laughs> Argu- yeah. Arguably, like I, I wouldn't argue with anybody who had their four movies to the top of the MCU. Like, yeah, literally. It's, Endgame, Infinity War, Civil War, Winter Soldier. Yeah, it's like, incredible. That, that is incredible. You made those four movies, and they are absolutely in everyone's top ten. And it's get a, on top five. What's, what's cool about it? Is that for fans? It's a four. It's a four movie arc for Captain America. Oh yeah, from start to finish. You can just really watch cool. those four. Good. Really, really <laughs> cool. So, and um, also the writers. We got to mention the writers: Stephen Mc. Stephen McFilly and Marcus. Mar- Mar- Chris Marcus and Stephen McFilly. Yeah, they, they were along all for They were on all four. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, stuck yeah. with the and Russo's. of course all with the guidance of Kevin Feige. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. The yeah. five of them together. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. um, and you can argue, like. That was almost kind of like a half, half movie for Black Widow because she's in it pretty much throughout the whole. She's movie. she can be argued as the co lead. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, um, um, all right, guys. Well, there it is. Our top ten. Oh, uh, one last thing. Sebastian Stan is amazing as the Winter Soldier. Yes, he is the perfect character for that. Going from like, Bucky to the Winter Soldier. He yeah, is sure. probably my top three. Well, top he doesn't really talk much in Winter Soldier, but. I love his character, like, going forward after that. I love how he changes, like, in Endgame. Is it, oh, in Infinity War. Like, he's just kind of, like... He's the guy happy. in Wakanda. Yeah, he's a cool yeah. guy. Yeah, like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He's with the he's, long hair. He's like a hippie again. He's cracking jokes. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, was... you know what? He's like that in the first Avenger, though. So he yeah. went back to being his old self. He went back to being Bucky. cool, yeah. Uh, all right, well, let me run through these top ten before we get to our honorable mentions. So at number ten, we have Captain America Civil War. Number nine, X Men: Days of Future Past. Eight, The Avengers. Seven, Man of Steel. Six, Spider Man: Into the Spider Verse. Five, Thor: Ragnarok. Four, Avengers: Infinity War. Three, Logan. Two, Avengers: Endgame. And number one, Captain America: The Good Winter List. Soldier. I don't agree with Spider Verse over Man of Steel, but I mean that's that's the way the list works. I mean, I'm actually kind of surprised one. I'm surprised that one movie didn't. Only made one of our lists, but we'll talk about I'm that more here curious in a yeah. to see what I'm You know what? Movie, uh, so after I sent <laughs> my list, um, it it pro- it might come up, but I I would have I might have had Joker on my list if I didn't I wasn't thinking about it because it's so new. I'm um, curious to see what number eleven. But is. I might have had Joker That's on my list. Number nine. Or number Joker, eleven is a movie that should have made this list. Even if I put Joker on my list, even if I put Joker on my list, it would have made the overall. All right, two list. movies so, come. Oh, so oh, number twenty one. Okay. Right. Number twenty one, and this was only on Keith's list at number ten. The Lego Batman movie. Okay. Nice. Um, number twenty. This was only on Brian's list at number ten. Joker didn't make any of our lists except for Brian. Didn't make your list, you? Not yet. No. It's too new. I'm it's... very surprised it didn't make that list. Well. Okay. It's on my list because it disturbed me like any other movie I've ever. Just because it felt, I felt like I was watching something the whole entire movie, and I I've never felt so uncomfortable watching a movie 
but in a good way. Like, I'll tell you I'll what. I'll never have that feeling ever. If it, if you ask me five years from now to redo this list, I bet you, oh, assuming sure. it stands up, Joker probably makes the list. Okay, but okay. I just, I, I, I can't. I, I also take into factor movies that stood the test of time. I mean, I have Joker. You, would, I don't have Man of Steel. Yeah. So number 19, only Gio and I had that on this list, and this is extremely underrated. Snowpiercer. Oh my god. Many people forget it's a comic book movie. Oh. I was thinking the I was thinking the other movie. Dang. Okay, all right. My list if I would have known about it. And this one I cannot believe didn't make any or any else's list after you and I. Kick ass. Kick ass. Was that one? What what, what, what number? Oh my god. This is at number eighteen with only two points. Both you and I have. I've never seen it. Nick Cage's last good performance. Yeah. Seriously, yes. Big Big Kick ass is awesome. Kick girl. Kick ass is amazing. Um number seventeen. Number 17, this was only on Brian's list, Big Hero 6. I love this movie. I love this I love this movie. I would probably show What'd you have that at, Big Hero 6? He had it at number 8. Right. Because he had three points. I've shown this movie at work. I don't show movies at work, but I've shown it probably like at least (laughs) (laughs) like eight times. Like, maybe a a gif of that face. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I've shown it. By school and by Disney. Yeah. Oh, so, my God. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I adore this movie more than any. And I never saw it in theaters. I saw, I I think one of you told me to watch it. I love this movie. And I watched I it, and movie. I it's. Uh, number 16, with five points, and it was only on Geo's list. Batman v Superman, as he claimed the old. Y'all are tripping. This movie um, is not in any of your list. Number okay. 15 at number 5, or at fi- 15 with 5 points, was only on Keith's list, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. The Edgar Wright film. That was close. Um, number 14 at, with 5 points, Guardians of the Galaxy. Number 13 with 6 points, Black Panther, was only on Keith Ryan's list. Um, oh, number 12, I can't believe this didn't make the list, Deadpool. Oh, wow. And number oh, eleven was nine points. Is what I'm thinking. Dread 3D. Oh god! Yeah, I've never seen it. Wow! This, I can't believe this movie didn't make the list. Uh, this I movie is so this movie underrated. I, swear. <laughs> I can't believe Deadpool didn't make a list. To be honest, but uh, yeah, I think 12? you and I are the only one that had it on our list. Wow! Yeah. Where was it on yours? Uh, I think it was six. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Or maybe or maybe seven somewhere. Around. First Where did you have Dread. Dread. I had it number. I think it was right after seven. I think I had Dread around that. I had Dread directly after Deadpool, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I've always heard about this movie, but I've never seen it. Carl yeah, Orban, the ideas about performance ever. Yeah. And he doesn't even take the helmet off. It's mm-hmm. incredible. The Mandalorian before the Mandalorian, think of it that way. With brighter colors and more craziness. Cersei always, from Game of Thrones as, uh, uh, as Big Mom. Mom. Big Mom. Oh my god. Dude. I always wanted to watch it. So good. So good. Yeah, so the, here I'll run through the all twenty one again. All right. We have the Lego Batman movie, Joker, Snowpiercer, Kick Ass, Big Hero Six, Batman v Superman. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, Guardians of the Galaxy, Black Panther, Deadpool, Dread, Captain America Civil War, X-Men Days of Future Past, Avengers, Man of Steel, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Thor Ragnarok, Avengers Infinity War, Logan, Avengers Endgame, Captain America The Winter. Nice. There's Movies that, we, that were notably so left off. Oh, I'm so happy. It walloped the competition. <laughs> walloped the competition. It won by six points. Uh, no Wonder Woman. No Spider-Man movie. Um, no, no other DC. That's right. No Homecoming or Far From Home. Didn't make any of our lists. So the thing is, we only submitted 10 movies. Only each submitted time. 10. Uh, you know, Joker, Wonder Woman, and Homecoming would have been my 11, 12, and 13. Yeah. yeah. Wonder so, Woman was like, I think 12, somewhere around there for me. Yeah. It was right up there. So it was, honestly, that was Aquaman. Aquaman. And, Aquaman and I highly considered, because I didn't know if anybody else was, Bumblebee was almost going to be on the list. That's right. I didn't know if it was considered a comic book movie. Because there are Transformers comics, but it didn't originate as comic books. Yeah, so no live action so far from home. I, I love Homecoming. There it is, guys. Our list. This is 21 movies. Awesome. I'm, I'm happy with it. because Top I mean, 10 comic book movies I of the decade. Have, I have Logan is pretty high, and then Ragnarok made the list and pretty damn high, so I'm Winter happy. Soldier's ranking it number one. I had oh, a yeah. feeling. Yeah. It's all right. I had a feeling Shut. that Winter Soldier was <laughs> number right. one just because of how excited he was about doing the list. I was like, our official top 10 movies of the decade. Top 10 comic book movies of the decade, right there. And that's going to end up being the regular list, too. <laughs> the film. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> 
It won't be. We'll no, see. It won't be. But some of those will probably make that list. Yeah, because so. the next one we're doing, which will be a, which will be released next Monday, a week from today. Um, oh my God! Now you're putting a timeline. A week from today, it is coming out uh, next Monday. It will be our top ten overall movies of the decade. That's going to be much more hard to count, much harder to count because all of our lists are probably going to be different. I feel like I should. Uh, <laughs> no, um, there are going to be movies that take the cake, but yes, it includes everything. So it includes superhero movies and overall films in general, and that Sorry. one will be fun. We're doing a top twenty list. We're only doing top ten officially, but uh, you can see it next month. Is white chip? No. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there's Animal House. Thank or, you. For no, it's Animal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. Um, that was fun, guys. A uh, fun discussion. I can't wait to do the top ten overall. That's gonna be an interesting. It's crazy. People are gonna be out. It's, it's gonna very, be very very interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gio and I are getting after some people oh, because yeah. of that match. Uh huh. Um, really I don't big. think it's going to make the list. Let's make a deal, Joe. Number <laughs> one, so we can make sure it's on the list. Let's do it, man. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah, check out all our stuff. Check out our – we're going to have a uh, – or right now you can see a Rise of Skywalker spoiler review part one up. We're going to do a part two of that. Um, check out everything we're doing on the podcast. We got our – you know, 2019 film stuff coming up um, pretty soon. Most anticipated for 2020 coming up pretty soon. So keep an eye out for that. Again, I'm Jacob. This is Gio. That's Brian. That's Jake. For Apocalypse Movies, see y'all next time. Hey everyone, Jacob Bartley here. Thanks for watching. If you want to check out something similar from Apocalypse Movies, click this video up here. If you want something a little bit different, check out this video down here. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to Apocalypse Movies and let us know your thoughts in the comments section. We always love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.